Hi, Starmus guys. I'm taking over Starmus Diaries today because it's a very special occasion, a very special day. And why I'm doing it? Because I have Gitanjali Rao with me, and she is the winner of first Stephen Hawking Medal Junior. Can you believe? I mean, this is this is incredible. <laughs> so I have her in front of me. So Gitanjali. This is cool and this is very strong, very powerful. You are an innovator and a young scientist, but also a brilliant science communicator. Do you feel a strong need to communicate science and technology? Because there are a lot of people who just do science and technology. They don't communicate, but you also communicate. Do you feel that? Do you feel that you need to do that? I think absolutely, right? A big part of science and research is obviously the research itself, but the other half is telling people how it's done, why we do it, why it's important, right? Yeah. There's no point in creating the world's most brilliant inventions and ideas if people aren't hearing about it. And so I really, really bring this drive to the work that I do that not only is the research important, not only is the science important, but it is important to share with the world around us. And it is important to motivate others around the world to recognize that they can do the same and they can do something different and they can do something unique. So I think that's the beauty of science. There's so many fields. There's so many different things you can learn. There's so many different things to research. And, you know, the best inventions haven't even been created yet. It's really yeah. about how we're going towards approaching it and how we're going to kind of see the world change and grow up with us. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, what is your research? What do you want to do? I mean, a lot of my research kind of goes along a bunch of different areas. I've worked with water quality, I've worked with opioid addiction, which is a big passion of mine, anti-cyberbullying tools. So I've looked at chemistry, right, bioengineering, um, a lot of computer programming. I've spent a lot of time in machine learning and artificial intelligence. But I guess the one thread that kind of branches it all together is I'm very passionate about knowledge and awareness of what's in our water, what we're putting into our bodies, right, what we're sending online. So a big thread in the work that I do is detection, looking at how we can detect things, how we can diagnose things. Um, in the future, I'd love to go down that biotech industry route, right? There's so much potential there, especially with the upcoming things happening with artificial intelligence, right? Something we talk about every single day at this point. You know, we're seeing growth in personalized treatment, personalized medication, right? Faster vaccines, more accurate vaccines. So it really is about how far the biotech industry is going to end up going. Amazing. What is your source of inspiration? Why you went to science? Was there something, was a book, film, your parents and stories? What happened? Why? Why suddenly? I mean, it's a hard question because I'm 19 years old, so I don't really know if this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. But um, I will tell you, when I was around three or four years old, my uncle got me the science kit, which I hated. I hated everything in me because I wanted a Barbie dream house. And I was playing with it all the time. And eventually, I ran out of experiments that I started to create my own. And that's kind of where my branch kind of went into science. And I started saying that I wanted to use science for kindness. And all I wanted to do in life was put a smile on people's faces. And so a big passion of mine turned into innovation, which I like to say is science for kindness. How are we using science and research to impact the world? And so that's really where that motivation came from. And that obviously has extended much, much beyond that since I was three years old. And I really have made it my mission to help other people recognize the same thing that I do. Amazing. You received many awards and the, what does the Hawking Medal mean for you? It's very different. It is very different, and it is an absolutely massive honor, right? Um, I think the Stephen Hawking Medal by itself is such a massive honor for someone to receive. And to, uh, first of all, extend that to a junior version as well, I think is giving so much power to the youth, which has been a big, big dream of mine and a goal of mine. And I think beyond that, it's a responsibility, which I'll talk about later tonight as well. But it helps me kind of recognize that, you know, my voice is heard, what I have to say is heard, and there's so many other students and youth out there with the same passion, the same energy, same drive, whose voices will also be heard in upcoming years as well. And so it is an honor, and honestly, in the name of Stephen Hawking as well, who is 
incredible and um you know someone i had looked up to for years and years and years and kind of watching this all unfold is still not really sinking in but I i'm sure it will in the next week or so <laughs> thank you thank you what advice would you give to young people like you who want to communicate science and make technological and scientific innovations but are perhaps scared mm -hmm. What is your advice? I mean, that's a great question. And sometimes I'm still looking for advice for the same situation because half the time I'm scared. Um, but my biggest piece of advice is to take the risk when it doesn't matter versus when it does. I'm a strong believer that I am where I am and I'm here today with you because I am young right? Because I'm 19 and I was 18, 17, 16, 15, whatever. And I had the time to learn and grow and mess up and fail and try new things and do it all over again, right? And I didn't have to worry about losing a job, losing money, right? Nothing yeah. of the sorts, right? This is the time to try new things and be a kid, right? Be a kid and do, do things that truly make you happy in life. All right. So my last question, it's a very important one. Okay. Arts. Mm-hmm. Do you play, you write, you paint, and how art is important for you? I do a little bit of everything, actually. Um, I do write. I've written two books. I write a lot of articles. I write a lot of Substack blogs, write a lot of blogs at school. Um, I draw a lot. I participate in art competitions all the way up into high school, and I still draw all the time. Um, and I play both the piano um, since I was three years old and play the keys by proxy and then play the bass guitar for the past six, seven years and then also learn the clarinet in middle school. So um, a little bit of everything. But again, we were talking about this earlier, but every every person, every talented person needs good balance, right? You, know, you need the scientific research, but you also need a pretty good brain when it comes to music and art and writing. So my god i think the standard is so high i can't imagine i don't know who else is going to compete <laughs> with her yeah <laughs> jesus christ i think <laughs> you agree guys i mean this is so thanks very much and we hope to see you in all storms festivals you have to come and you have to realize that you are a part of the storms family and we have you, and we're gonna support you, everything, and you're gonna support us. Yeah. And we have to bring young generation to science and inspire them. And we have many plans. So thanks very much. Of course. And see you soon. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>